My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Do you agree with me that everybody here can receive 10 grains of corn? And after 10 years, some of us will be millionaires and others will not be millionaires. Do you know why? Some of them will go home and boil it and chew it. Others will go and plant it. Others, after planting the first season, they will just stop. Others will plant the first season. When they get the harvest, they will plant everything. But what happened was that we all started with the same measure. In the same way, God has given every believer because the day you got born again, the Holy Ghost came to stay in you. He gives you a measure of his anointing. The question is, what are you going to do to the measure he gave so that you can multiply it? But you must agree that you have a seed. There is nobody who is born again who can say that I am not anointed. You just don't know, but you are anointed. Tell somebody I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You know, you are not convinced. Say I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Say I don't care what you think. Me, I'm anointed. <laughs> okay, now talk to yourself. Say, say I don't care what I think. I am anointed. If you are born again, there is a deposit. There is a seed of an anointed. It can be, diff there are different forms of the anointing. But this anointing, you can increase in it. It can be an anointing to sing, you can increase in it. An anointing to preach or teach, you can increase in it. A prosperity anointing, you can increase in it. It is a deposit of that anointing. And what we have not done is that we have not given it attention because we have not known its value. And even if we know the value, the price is too difficult to pay. So we said, I think I will just keep this one seat. Yeah. I'm not a pastor. I don't want to run a church. But by now you know that the anointing is just not for pastors. You need the anointing to win in this life. So whatever it is, just get the anointing and operate by it. Hallelujah. The first thing you need to increase in the anointing is what I call desire. Say desire. Shout desire. Say appetite. Say hunger. Test. The reason why at times you can drive one hour to go and buy food is because you have a desire for the food times you get up say i like the juice from that shop there's a hunger there's a desire which will drive you to go and get what you want there's an appetite in the same way if you don't want higher measures of the anointing you cannot even begin the process in the first place and the anointing responds to hunger and desire psalm 63 verse 1 somebody said that god you know that i need the anointing just give all of it to me Let's talk to the people who sell cars. They know that everybody needs a nice car. But they have not given us the car. What about the Chick-fil-A? Chick -fil-A? They know that a lot of people like it. How come they don't go door to door? Chick-fil-A. Chicken strips. Small tray. 24 pieces. <laughs> How did I know the name? How do you know I'm correct? So you know what I know. All right. Oh God, you know, I have the microphone so you don't try to. Oh God, thou art my God. I'm talking about the anointing, not Chick fil A. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and a testy land where no water is. Next verse. To see thy power and thy glory. He said that I am hungry, I'm thirsty to see the power. I'm waiting for more anointing. Is somebody with me? Till you have that appetite, that desire, it does not come to you. You must have a hunger, a desire that, Father, I want this anointing to grow. I want this anointing to increase. Revelation 22 verse 17. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is attest, the force which will drive you to the anointing, the source of the anointing is the test. 
He said, let him that is a test come. If you are not tasting, you won't go. I repeat. If you are not hungry, you will just relax. But when you are hungry, something will just get, you get up. Go to the fridge and open something. If you find somebody who says he's hungry and there's food in the fridge and he has not eaten, either he's sick or he's not hungry. If there's food and you have not gotten up to eat, you, you don't have appetite. When I say you are sick, you don't have appetite. Or if you're really hungry, the Bible said to the hungry, even what is bitter is sweet. If you're truly hungry, you will find ways of eating something. In the same way, if you're truly hungry for God's power, higher dimensions, you will go the extra mile. You will get up and do something about it. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. For I will pour water upon him that is tasty. Go. You are pouring water and you are so generous. Why don't you pour the water for all of us? Say, no, no, no. I don't waste my water. I pour my water upon the one who is tasty. You must have a hunger, a desire. Spiritual things, when it comes, it comes by your desire. Desire is a language in the realm of the spirit. It's an energy which draws and pulls you in the right direction. First Corinthians 14 verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. But rather you may prophesy. When it comes to love, say that follow love. But when it comes to spiritual gifts, when you read the actual Greek rendering, the word gift is in italicized, which means that it is not in the original. So the, this verse actually reads in the original. Desire the spirituals. So when it comes to the spiritual things, spiritual, the supernatural, it comes by your desire. Paul said, the way to get it is desire it. You must want it. Desire the spirituals. On that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus said, is anyone hungry or anyone thirsty? He should come to the waters. For out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 7, 37. So, the first thing you must do is that you must be baptized with a hunger for power. A hunger for more anointing. A hunger to operate in higher dimension of God's power. Lift up your right hand. Say, Heavenly Father, I operate in higher dimensions of your power and right now i receive a fresh baptism of a hunger a desire a thirst for more of you and your power in jesus name hallelujah i pray that somebody will leave this place today and as you are going you are saying that in the next one year i'm going to grow in the anointing i'm going to pursue this anointing i'm going to grow in higher dimensions of it for the glory of god Amen. The second thing you must do is that I told you the anointing comes from a person. So you must learn to have a relationship with a person. If you had money to give or if a billionaire wanted to give money to everyone and you have no relationship with that person and somebody has the same need but this person has a relationship do you think it would be a prayer point for the person who has a relationship to get it? No. So one of the things you have to learn to do is to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. I repeat, have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you. The day you got born again, you became the temple of God. He has come to reside in you. But we have not given him our attention. So to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit means that give him attention. The anointing is not like the rod of Aaron which I can just give it to you and say, sir, go and divide the Red Sea. The moment we begin to treat God's power that way, it becomes a charm. It becomes a magic wand. One day, Elisha had a servant. And the Shunammite woman came and he had a problem with the son. So Elisha was busy. He didn't want to go. So he called his son, Gehazi, come. Give me second Kings 4 verse 29. He says that, please, the woman's daughter is dead, so go and put the, the, my rod, my anointing staff, go and put it on the child. Then said he to Gehazi, get up thy loins, take my staff in your hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. If any salute thee, answer him not. A time when you greet people and they are not responding, maybe somebody told them not to respond. All right. <laughs> answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. Go and put it on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. 
Wherefore, he went again to meet him and said, The child is still not awake. Elisha had a staff. He has been working miracles with the staff. When he gave it to Gehazi, Gehazi went. The same staff which has been working miracles, it didn't work in the hands of Gehazi. It means, this is not a magic one, the anointing we talk about. If Gehazi had a personal relationship with the one who anoints, it would have produced results. You realize that for the sake of time, when Elisha came, he left the staff there. He went to lie on the boy. Why? The person of the anointing was inside Elisha. And yet, Gehazi had the staff. It did not work. Listen to me. You can know the magic formula the pastors use. Or that your mother used to pray. Father, thou art worthy, O oh God. Let thy power come upon this boy. Nothing will happen. Because you don't know the person of the anointing. You must come to a place where you decide to have a personal relationship with the one who anoints. And is called the Holy Spirit. Pastor, how do I have a personal relationship with the one who anoints? I think I've said this several times, so I'm just going to summarize it for you. The first thing is that come to a place I call yieldedness. Say yieldedness. Other people call it death to self, but I like to say yieldedness because to say death to self is difficult to explain, but it makes a lot of sense. But the key thing is that you must come to a place where you are yielded to the principles, the ideologies of the Holy Spirit. Where you come to a place of complete obedience to the Holy Spirit. A lion is very powerful, true or false? But I believe that if a lion is dead right here, the lion cannot get up. You can slap the lion, the lion will not respond. You can even come and take a picture. I'm sure there's a dead lion. Everybody will take a picture and put it on their WhatsApp status. I just stood on a lion. And the lion will just be watching you. Chilling with the lion. Why are you able to do that to the lion? The lion is dead. Over there, the lion has lost his sensitivities. But we, when we come to the place of death, what happens is that you are saying that, Father, I have my will. There's something I want to do. But because you said I should not do it, I will not do it. That is the practical meaning of death to say, oh, you are yielded. You are yielded. Try and come this way and I'm pushing you this way. This guy wants to go here. I don't know what he wants to go to do here, but I believe going here will help him. So I'm trying to push him. This same person. This person just keep going. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> this person is trying to come, but he's yielded. He's yielded. He's yielded. Why? I push him to a place of power and dominion. But this guy wants to have his own way in life. Take your seat. Come to a place where you are yielded to the mentality of the Holy Ghost. Please, we have not lived for hundred or thousand years yet. So let's understand that there's a God who knows more than we know. Let's stop saying, this is what I want. This is what I know. Please, what you know is too small. Even when we take you to class right now and examine you, what you know is not enough to pass. So we should come to a place where we agree that God, He knows more than we do. He is better than us. And Try to come to a place where we are yielded to what he said in his way and what he's telling you in your heart. Is somebody with me? So that's the first thing, yielded. The second thing is, recognize his presence. Say recognize. By now, if you got up, you live with your husband or wife and they pretended like you don't exist, you get angry. You came to church, you greeted pastor, pastor said, You get worried. What about the Holy Spirit who lives inside you? And you have lived for how many days? And you don't know that somebody is living in your house. He, when we say the Holy Spirit lives inside, we, it is not a cliche. It is real. It's tangible. It's possible that he is with you and you don't know. In Genesis 28 verse 16, Jacob said, The Lord was in this place and I knew it not. God was there, very God. He couldn't recognize him. All you have to do is recognize him. You drive in the morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That statement is a statement of recognition. Knowing that you are there. Thank you for being here. I love you, Holy Spirit. It's a statement of recognition. Make sure you learn to talk to the Holy Spirit. Pastor, you want me to be talking to myself? No, no. Before I tell you, I've been talking to yourself already. Three of us. 
So I'm just saying, I talk to the one who lives inside you. So it's, it's not a new theory. There is a God who is with you. He's called Emmanuel, the God with us, the Holy Spirit. As you are driving, there are days you have questions on your mind. Just take time and say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? There are days you hear something, there are days you, you will hear anything. But at least you are recognizing His very presence. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing to do, which I told you some time ago, is, is, is three in one. Say, resist not. Grieve not. Quench not. The Bible said, and they resisted the Holy Spirit. That's what I just demonstrated to you. When you resist the Holy Spirit, He does not leave you. Because He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But something will happen. He said, when you resist Him, He is grieved. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. He is there, but He is not happy. And when He is not happy, He is grieved. What will happen is that His fire, His power will be quenched. I'm rushing because I already explained that some time ago. So all you have to do is don't resist. The Holy Ghost is telling you, you made a mistake. Go and apologize. He said, for the where? Me. A whole me. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost, you can stay where you are. He won't leave you, but he's grieved. His power can flow through you. He said, no. Go and give. Go 10, 10, 10. Go back and give to the person at the traffic light the $50. The Holy Ghost, the poor person, they don't need 50. He won't, he, he won't leave you, but he's grieved. They are the small, small things. The little things. And yet we resist him. When we resist him, he's grieved. And when he's grieved, we quench the spirit. To summarize on the second point, is that make sure you know the person. You know the person by a relationship. The first step of knowing the person is the place of yieldedness. Second is recognize, appreciate. You are playing soccer. Wherever you are, you are saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter where you are. You are saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a statement of recognition. There are days in a day, I don't know how many times I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Everywhere, in the day, I can be even hitting you say, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Let it be part of your life. You can start from somewhere and you can arrive at somewhere. Some say, no, it's weird. It's religious. No. Maybe this is weird. Find a way to do it. Find a nicer way which is not weird. And do it either way you will have to recognize in order for his higher measures of his power to flow through you amen so the first step is desire the second is have a relationship with the spirit then for the sake of time we might stop here for today the next is what i call say the virtue and the vessel yes work on your vessel say work on your vessel can i get another bottle of water Okay. I can't do what I want to do, but let me just try this one. Let me tell you what I wanted to do. This is all good water, true of us. The price is the same thing. Okay. If you came to church and I opened this bottle, forgive me, forgive me. I spat in this one. Which one would you take to drink? The, oh, why? Is it not the same water? But because there's an extra element here, you don't like it. Yes. <laughs> This is oil. I'm praying about this. Father, let the anointing come. You need water. Father, let the anointing come. Then I pour this water into this oil. Come and drink. Will you drink this one? Yeah, it's anointing. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, you see the way your mind is interpreting the content of the container. The container can influence the content. I repeat, the container can influence the content. I sure you are here. The Bible describes you as a vessel. Human, we are vessels. The Bible talks about how the, the ladies are the weaker vessels. First Peter 3 verse 7. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel. Now please, if you're a lady here and the Bible is calling weaker vessel, it, it is a, if you know the meaning of that weaker vessel, you will use it to your advantage. Yes. So don't. <laughs> you are surprised at the amen. Eh? Don't think that it's trying to put you down. It is your power. Because in every organization, the weakest link is the most powerful point of attack. And if you know what to do with the weakest link, you are, you, you are, too, you are too blessed. But another day. But the point is, the Bible calls them a vessel. Whether weak or strong, it's a vessel. Acts 9 verse 15. 
Thank you, Jesus. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. So, he make reference to us as vessels. Say, I'm a vessel. Shout it. Shout, I'm a vessel. I come to say, I'm a vessel. Romans 9 verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Had not the porter power over the clay of the same lamp to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. So one vessel can be to honor, another one can be unto dishonor. But I realize that whether you are for honor or for dishonor is not the porter's fault. It is your fault. Second Timothy 2 verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of the earth. Some to honor and some to... I repeat. There are vessels, some to honor and some to dishonor. I think on Thursday I told you about how when you have special visitors in your house, you know which drawer to go to. Go to the other one behind the door and bring the golden nice one because of the quality of the visitor coming. When is you know it's the plastic one, the plastic one will be fine. <laughs> they are all vessels, but one for honorable purpose, one for ordinary, one for this honorable purpose. But in <laughs> next verse. Next verse. If any man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work so you prepare your vessel for the quality of the oil which will come inside you do you remember that one day jesus is walking in luke 8 46 and a woman with an issue of blood he came to touch the hem of his garment and jesus said somebody touched me and virtue has gone out of me jesus was the vessel the anointing was the virtue you you are the vessel the anointing is the virtue question which virtue is resident in you? The quality of the virtue will be determined by how you prepare the vessel. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. I'm sure this verse will make my point clear. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking sour, so that a little fully, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor, NIV, He's talking about the anointing. He said that the anointing is there, but when dead flies enter, the anointing begins to stink. As dead flies give perfume, the word perfume is the anointing, ointment, a bad smell. So you can buy perfume for $50,000, but when you put a little dead fly, instead of smelling like Gucci, you begin to smell like a dead fly. The dead fly is very inexpensive, but little dead fly will make the, the Gucci bad. So a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. You can find somebody who is so wise. And small foolishness can make us forget all the wisdom of the person. That is what he's talking about, the anointing. Many times, we are, many people are hungry and thirsty in life, looking for the virtue in your vessel. But our level of consecration has polluted the water. And so the anointing is limited in us. Somebody with me. What must you do to prepare the vessel? Don't forget you are a spirit. You have a mind. You are a soul. And you have a body. So in preparing your vessel, you must learn to work on your spirit. Work on your mind. Work on your body. Is that correct? How do you work on your spirit? I'm trying to close. Romans 12 verse 11. The Bible says, be zealous. Be fervent in spirit. Amplify please. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Say fervent. In spirit. You must be fervent. Never lack in zeal. And in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the spirit. Serving the law. The word fervency talks about your passion. You must be passionate about spiritual things. Don't forget what we are doing. We are talking about working on the vessel. The person of the Holy Spirit is there. He's really ready to pour onto you the oil, the anointing. But the first thing, be concerned about the things of the Spirit. There are some people, they don't like spiritual things. I'm not saying that be zealous without knowledge. That is not what I'm, what I'm preaching. 
but at least you should be concerned about spiritual matters. Spiritual matters should at least get your attention because you want the spirit anointing. If you don't want the anointing, I'm sure this one is not for you because you, you are not interested. But when you are interested, if you want my gift, be interested in my things. Is that correct? You don't treat me anyhow and forget about me and think that overnight it will come. No. The Holy Spirit is a person. So be zealous. Be interested in spiritual, be fervent. We, we should see your action concerning spiritual things. No, not we, the one who anoints. He should see your action concerning spiritual things. Hallelujah. The next thing is your mind. The anointing of God is in your spirit, but it will flow through your mind. That's how I come in Romans 12 verse 1. He said that be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are days before I have service, I come early and I sit in the office. Not because I don't have anything to say. I can come here and we chat, we chat, we chat. But I have to prepare my mind for the virtue to flow. There are days when we have like uh, 31st service. That day I can go six hours not, not talking to anyone. Not because I, did, I just don't want to talk. But I must prepare my mind. There are days before service, I won't pick certain calls because by the time I pick the call, the complaining will just drain all the anointing. <laughs> so, I will just wait. After the service, I can now talk about anything. Why am I doing that? I'm preparing the mind. The mind is a system, a con it's a connection to the realm of the spirit. In the same way, you have to be careful what you engage your mind in and your thoughts. You see? <laughs> be careful of your mind. Less said, the better. The things you keep saturating your mind with every day. Every day. Your Instagram pages is a certain quality of pictures all the time. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, pastor, pastor, just go. Not everybody wants the anointing. Draw for. So, yeah, if, if. But the point is, the quality of your mind what you saturate your mind, what you think about, your concern about, all this one. By the time you close your eyes to pray, the images are coming. It has shut, the anointing is in your spirit, but it has blocked it. You close your eyes, at time, I don't know what you are thinking, but let me say what I'm saying. At times when you close your eyes to pray, you have 35,000 you are not talking to. You're angry. You close your eyes to pray and say, ah, Mr. Agabus, God punish the devil. Sister Rick is here. He is dying right now. <laughs> so your, your mind is blocked by unforgiveness, pain, bitterness and a lot of other things so you must prepare your mind so Paul told us in what to do Philippians 4 verse 8 he said do you know what the things you, you must think about for the anointing to flow finally my brethren whatsoever things are true don't think about things which are not true whatsoever things are honest if it's not honest don't think about it whatsoever things are just Things are pure, lovely, things of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. When people bring good news, you, you are ready to shut it off. But when it's bad news, hey, take, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. You mean they said that, hey, you are polluting your mind and the anointing will be limited in your life. He said, if it's true, give it attention. If it's not true, say, it's okay, it's, it's okay, it's, try it. The last one is your body. Say, my body. E Ecclesiastes 9 verse 8. Oh, precious Jesus. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 8. 9 verse 8. Ecclesiastes. Let thy garments be always white. He's talking about purity. And let your head never lack oil. When you walk in holiness, this your head, oil will flow. Because the Bible said, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. That rock is Christ. The rock is following you everywhere you go. And the rock has oil to pour over your life. It's just waiting for your garments to be pure. Let thy garment always be white. And let thy head never lack ointment. Job 29 verse 2. Glory be to Jesus. Mm, Job 29. Let thy garments always be white. Oh, that I was in man's past. Next verse. When is, next verse. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. So this anointing you want, the rock who is the Christ, he can pour it over you all the time. But he says, let your garments be white. Ruth 3 verse 3. Ruth chapter 3 verse 3. 
Before the anointing, he says something. Oh, precious Jesus. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee. One of the things you must learn to do is the washing of yourself. I'm not talking about standing in the shower, but the shower of the blood. As you walk in purity, he said the anointing comes upon you. Why? We talked about how we must deal with the flesh and things of the flesh. Because God gave a commandment. The anointing must not come on any flesh. Because the anointing stays on flesh, the flesh will be in trouble. Exodus 30 verse 32. There's so much to share. I didn't talk about prayer, fasting, and all those things, giving impartation for the sake of time. But if we can do this too, it is the, the practical things which will help us in doing it. And when we do this, we will be functioning in the practical things. Amen. Exodus 30 verse 32. He said, upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Go back to verse 31 so that we know he was talking about the anointing. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Next verse. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. That's how come you must die to the flesh. That's how we must work on the vessel. The moment this flesh is gone, you will realize that. This is not physical death disclaimer. Don't go and do something. Like pastor, pastor said, if I die, I'll get the anointing. No. He's talking about the works of the flesh. The desires and the lust of the flesh he's talking about. Hallelujah. The seed of the anointing is resident in you. And God has a principle. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abided alone. If the seed can die, it will multiply. That's the seed of God. God's power. God's ability. Listen. You don't have to be called a pastor to be anointed. You don't have to be in the choir or you don't need anyone's approval to be anointed. Only if you get the approval of God, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He said Jesus Christ came accredited with signs and wonders by the anointed. At times you need the anointing for the children you have the family and the friends you have. At times, it's not an anointing to come and preach. You need a prosperity anointing to change your world. You need an anointing for wisdom. There are different dimensions. Some people have an anointing to cook. It's an anointing. It can take them far. Is somebody with me? Whatever you are involved in, you need this God's anointing and you have a deposit. Are you willing to increase in it? Be on your feet and let's close. Clap for Jesus. Are you clapping for Jesus? Are you clapping for Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands, everyone. I'm sure you have heard a lot. And there's a desire in your heart. We want to pray two or three prayers. Number one, you are saying, Father, grant me an appetite, a desire for more of your glory, more of your power. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Maranga shahas. I can hear your voice. Melehegege shedeges. Lepenga telepenga shonga peteles. Lepenga telepenga bahas. Lepenga telepenga palipahas. Rados. Lepenga telepenga palipahas. Renga telepenga telepenga has. Lepenga telepenga telepahas. Lepenga telepenga dos. Renga telepenga telepahas. Rababas. Lepenga renga telepenga talabas. Renga pon telira tapas. Renga telepenga telepahas. Jesus. Number two, you are praying and saying, Father, grant me grace to work on my vessel so that great virtue will flow through this vessel. Lift up your will begin to pray right now. 
in the name of Jesus finally the anointing of God is here maybe you are believing God for favor for preservation for healing it doesn't matter what you are believing God for in this service in this atmosphere you are saying father let the anointing rest upon me upon my children let it rest upon my documents whatever you want to connect the anointing to begin to take delivery there's an anointing in this place go ahead take the impartation of the anointing i can hear your voice there is power in this place at the mention of his name you are changed by God's power lift up your two hands in the name of Jesus lift up your two hands Thank you, Jesus. Mara Agres. Le rekeve de gigrehestes. Le rekeve de yadas. Somebody, you, last night or two nights ago, you were sleeping and you realized that you were struggling to breathe and you woke up. You were struggling to breathe. You were sleeping. You find yourself struggling to breathe and you woke up. Come to me. I want to pray for you. But lift up your two hands. Let me pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Rom Vrahagash. That devil is a liar. Lift up your two hands. Let's sing that song, Power and Mind. Mm, belongs to a God forever and ever. Lift it up for me. He belongs. He belongs to our God. Forever and ever. Hey. Power and He belongs. belongs. He belongs to our God. Forever and ever. Devil of darkness.
stretch your hand towards me. I saw that there's one young person, a child. He had a similar experience. Right now, I said that child free. In the name of Jesus. Go free in the name of Jesus. Right now, I demand preservation. In the name of Jesus. I command the glory of God to rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing find expression in your life. Right now, let the favor of God visit you. Let the oil of favor, oil of favor, academic favor, financial favor, marital favor, career favor, in the name of Jesus, it rest upon you. And Father, baptize us as a people, as a church. An appetite for more of your power. A desire, a hunger for more of your glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every voice, every force fighting against us or any one under the sound of my voice. By God's power, I curse. I command that the weapon has failed. It has failed. I condemn every evil tongue. I condemn every negative tongue. I silence every tongue. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Let your favor rest upon us mightily. In the name of Jesus. Now maybe you are watching us online or you are here in person. And you don't know this Jesus. I said without Jesus, you don't have a deposit of the anointing. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you want to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, decree I decree that you are the Son of God. Son of you God. came unto the world. Well. And you died. And you rose up again. You rose up again. Right now. Right now. I receive. I receive eternal life. Eternal life. I receive. I receive the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift. From today, today, I live for you. I live for you. And you alone. And you alone. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Father, upon all the glory there shall be a defense. In the name of Jesus. Upon all the glory there shall be a defense. In the name of Jesus. You are our help, yes. and our only help. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone shouted a living amen. amen. Will you clap for Jesus? Are you sure you are clapping for Jesus? Can you go ahead and take your seat please? Thank you Jesus. Were you blessed today? Are you sure? Can you go ahead and pick up your offerings and let's go. Will you pick up your offerings? If you need an envelope, lift up your hands. The ushers will give you one. The details are on your screen. You want to give? Let's pray. Say, Father, I give because I love you. But as I give, it comes back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone shouted a living amen. Can we go ahead and take the offerings, please? Oh, ye. Oh, so give on ye, come, Jesus, you're my holy. Oh, ye, come, oh, ye, come, so give on.
Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. What the privilege that we gave to you, not to man. Command help, financial help. I command the prosperity anointing to rest upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Let there be a dramatic turnaround in their finances for good. In Jesus' name. And everyone shout the living amen. Will you clap for Jesus? Are you sure you are clapping for Jesus? Hallelujah. Were you blessed today? If today is your first time of being here, can you be on your feet? I want to give you a special royal welcome. If today is your first time of being here. All right. Somebody is standing around to see who. Can we clap for? Daddy, please. If they are by you, welcome them, greet them. This song we is for you. We welcome you. We extend our hands. This is your song. We love you. We love you. Right here I see me. I am. We welcome you. Before you take your seat, can I pray for you? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are grateful that you send wonderful people our way. Let your mighty arm, let your strong arm rest upon them mightily. That which concerns them is perfected and grant them their heart desire. In this season of the anointing, let that anointing find a great surgeon in their lives for good. In Jesus' name, and everyone shouted a living amen. God bless you. You can take your seat, please. We appreciate you. Glory be to God. Amen few announcements the first one is next weekend is the homegoing services for our sister delight can we get a flyer please thank you jesus all right so i've been telling you we have we have the first service august the fifth is a friday the time is exactly 5 30 that is the visitation and the viewing is open to the public to plan and be there we are going to start the services exactly on time then the saturday we are starting the morning service. The viewing, 10 a.m. exactly. It's not 10.30, it's not 11. We mean the 10. It's going to be 10. And we'll start for viewing for one hour. Then from 11 to, it shows 1 p.m. here, but it's likely we might finish before that. We are going to have the funeral service. Then right from there, we go to West Timer and have the cemetery. And we have the barrier service there. Then... Everybody will go home to change and relax. No, relax and change. Yes. If you change and relax, you. So you relax, then you change. In the evening, we are going to have the evening service, 8.30. Hello. Please, it's a long day. Plan and be there. She's our sister. And everyone should make sure you are there. Secondly, the department she was in, if you are part, make sure we support our sister. And if you are not in the department, make sure you come and support. You support with your presence and your present and your gift. Hallelujah. And want to call the family and pray for the husband and the children. Can we invite them and pray for them? Hallelujah. Let's keep clapping as they come. Hallelujah. Let's keep clapping for them as they come. As they can be on your feet and let's begin to pray for them. Stretch your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You want to stretch your hand that Father, you, your hand will rest upon the nuclear family. You perfect that which concerns them. You provide help, support. Anything they've lost in the past of our sister, you are the great provider. And by them, want to pray for the extended family that the help and the comfort of God will be their portion also. Lift up your voice. I believe there's a blessing in your mouth. Release it right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Legahas. Great helper. Great helper. Great helper. Father, in the name of Jesus. Your name is the comforter, Holy Spirit. Let your comfort be tangible for them. Let your favor be upon these children. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy that you will live mighty life, great lives, 
The enemy will not exact upon you. Let there be tangible covering of his presence over you. Father, we command that everything concerning the celebration services. Everything went well in the name of Jesus. Those back in Ghana, those in Nigeria, those here, they are blessed and preserved. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you that you will do more than we have asked of you. In Jesus' name. And everyone shouted a living amen. Let's clap for them as they take their seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you are clapping, do it better. Hallelujah. Can you take your seat, please? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The last announcement is we have ended our small groups semester. We started small groups from the first semester. This is the second semester. I know some people have been part. Others have not been part, but it's been great. And this semester, the focus was on games, sports, different types. People did painting. I didn't know some people could do some good painting. We will try and sell if it will sell like the one they did for one million dollars. If, if it will sell for good, then every day we'll do painting. <laughs> Amen. So, we did it. And yesterday we finished it with a football game. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Cosmos, can you please count? Yes. Yes. No, I don't want Pastor Desmond today. Pastor Cosmos, please. I'm waiting for you. Is the video ready? Please, where's Pastor Cosmos? Oh, I can't see you. See. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon, turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.